This week on Wheel of Science, we're talking higher dimensions, so get your 4D glasses on. What's up, Morpheus? Welcome to Wheel of Science. Chuck, spin that wheel. Oh, wow, I, I guess you don't feel like talking this week. <laughs> And Peta Marie Scott wants to know this. How do we know higher dimensions exist? If they do exist, how many may there be? We do not know for sure if higher dimensions exist. But what we do know is mathematically, we can describe in complete detail zero dimensional space, one dimensional space, two dimensional space, three dimensional space, that's the space we live in, four dimensional space, that's the space time, in which we live, and mathematically just add a dimension to get five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So the math takes us there, and so too then does our imagination. So since the math can accurately model the zero, one, two, three, and four dimensions, does that mean that it's equally as accurate for dimensions five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and on? One of the great features of mathematical models of reality is that when you manipulate the math, in a way, you're manipulating your understanding of reality. And if a math can make a prediction, if a new equation makes a prediction, and if a prediction is based on an idea that is fundamentally true, then there's a good chance that prediction can be verified by experiment. So we don't yet know how to access other dimensions, but the day that happens, we just invoke the math and these higher dimensions might even seem familiar to people who have studied the math that got us there. Oh man, so I'm gonna call my travel agent and my math teacher. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Neil, you ready for another question? Ready for another question, spin that wheel. Okay, Alex Reynoso says this, can a creature from a higher dimension interact with us in our dimension? Great question. If a higher dimensional creature interacted with us, it would manifest in highly peculiar ways. Think about it. If we are ants on a sheet of paper, living only within that two-dimensional uh, flat world, and we take a sphere and pass it through that sheet of paper, what would that look like to the ant? The ant would say, oh, wait a minute, there's a dot. Oh, the dot just became a circle, a small circle. Oh, the circle's growing. Oh my gosh, oh, it got to a maximum size. Oh, now the circle's shrinking. Oh, it's a dot again. It disappeared. Oh my gosh. That's how an ant would describe us passing a, a hollow sphere through the ant's universe, a two-dimensional universe. So there would be things happening in our space-time that would defy common sense. And we just describe things popping in and out of existence and behaving in ways that we don't completely understand, even if we can accurately describe it. Yet to a higher dimensional being, it's clear and obvious what's going on. So 4D would totally change alien probing, if you know what I mean. It turns out that if you look at a two-dimensional creature and they're purely two dimensions, that means their skin is just a line outlining their innards. So from a three-dimensional view, you can see their entire inner structure. To a higher dimensional being than us, they can see entirely inside of our bodies. And so if they wanted to operate, they wouldn't have to open up our skin, they just go straight in, accessing it from a higher dimension. Once your appendix out, they just go, step, that's it. You don't even know what happened. That would be cool. Surgery in a higher dimension would transform medicine. Well, that certainly makes a part of my body very happy. All right, let's take a little break right now, and we'll be back with more Wheel of Science as I go off to get probed by another dimension. This episode is sponsored by Wix. If you need to build a website in any dimension, you got to use Wix. Drag and drop to build the site of your dreams. We did it here for wheelofscience.com. Add a blog, add a store, have fun with animated backgrounds. We could actually make the background a video. You'll have the perfect website for desktop and mobile. Head to the link in the description and start your site using Wix today. That's Wix.com slash go slash StarTalk. 
Welcome back to Wheel of Science. Of course, we're here with Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Neil, you ready for another question? Bring it on. Spin that wheel. Richard Stenhouse wants to know this. How can we know what a hypercube is if we can't even conceive what it looks like? We can draw what it looks like and precisely describe every property that it has. Just because we can't make one, just because we don't have access to a fourth dimension, doesn't mean we don't fully understand what it is in the fourth dimension. The hypercube has sides that are three-dimensional cubes. In the same way, a three-dimensional cube has sides that are two-dimensional squares. In the same way that a square has sides that are one-dimensional lines. In the same way, a line has sides that are zero-dimensional points. Don't get me started. Look at that. Don't put Neil in a box or a cube or a hypercube. All right, Neil, so we received an episode comment from John Cates, and he says this. There's probably a giant donut hurling at us from the fifth dimension. Fred's coming to kill us. Do you have any idea what this guy's talking about? I see what you did there. You called this evil donut from space Fred, because we don't really know what it is. And because I called dark matter Fred, because we don't know what it is. We shouldn't even call it dark matter, because that implies we know it's matter, but we don't. And same with dark energy. We don't know what if it's energy. So Fred and Wilma, that's really what we should call dark matter and dark energy. So I see what you did there. So in that case, can we call the donut Dino? Hey, it's time for this week's poll, and make sure you answer it right here. And here's the question. Would you want to visit a higher dimension, full well knowing they'll make fun of you for the way that you look? Neil? Well, imagine a 2D creature that pops into existence in our 3D world. They'd be like paper people, right? They, they would be flat completely, and then if they turned sideways, they would disappear entirely. They would have no thickness at all. So they could hide from you just always making sure they stay, they stay uh, sort of uh, parallel to your line of sight. So if you pop into a fourth dimension, people will laugh at you and they'll poke you and wonder what's wrong with you because you're missing a dimension. Can you handle that emotionally? I think that's the question. Now for me, yeah, I'd, I'd take it, definitely. Put me in a higher dimension. Well, while you're there, just make sure they take out your appendix. That's the important thing. <laughs> hey, what do you know? That is our show. As always, we have to say thank you to Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Thanks, Neil. All right, Chuck, always good to be with you. And as you can see, I'm in my office this time. Uh, but sometimes I could be somewhere else in the universe. But you find me every time. That is because I am stalking you. I went through your trash <laughs> last night. When we were looking for an online home for wheelofscience.com, we went to Wix. Yeah, I built the site myself and it took me less time than it does to get into my corset in the morning. Don't judge me. Wix helps you get your site seen. Their search engine optimization tool guides you to internet domination. You can get a custom domain and more if you upgrade to a premium plan. How cool is that? Head to the link in the description and start your site today. That's wix.com slash go slash star talk. Until next time, I'm Chuck Nice saying thanks for watching Wheel of Science. And I'm your personal astrophysicist, as always, bidding you to keep looking up.